Greetings, you beautiful subterranean mutants, and welcome back to Stellaris with me, Lathrix. And, of course, welcome to the newest full playthrough using one of the new origins, Subterranean. Today, we're going to be playing an empire which is all about simply staying away from all of the rest of the galaxy. This is the empire you play when you've been having a really bad week, and you simply wish to hide away from everyone else, perhaps even underground, or secretly hoping they'll burn away into nothingness. This is the Bliss Administration, an empire of subterranean mutants. Although they are not xenophobic in the more traditional sense, they simply can't really communicate with other empires. They have been in the caves for so long, they have lost their sense of sight, their sense of hearing, and they are even mute, which makes sense with the whole lack of sense of hearing thing. They communicate via pheromones and subtle electric charges when nearby, making them utterly alien to all of the sapient life. This empire has been living in the desert world here, the harsh climate forcing them into the caves millennia ago. And although they established sapience, probably the first sapience in the galaxy, it has taken them this long to eventually get to space with their inability to write things down, their inability to really communicate efficiently. But now they are finally here and ready to take over their chunk of the galaxy and defend it fiercely from all others. Now, I won't be taking Inwards Perfection because I've took that so many times, but I will be putting those restrictions on myself. I will not have rivals, defensive packs, anything like that. We're basically being a fanatic isolationist in this run, and we're even hiding underground, of course. So with Subterranean, the new origin, we get the Cave Dweller trait. This gives us more minerals from jobs. It gives us a minimum habitability of 50% on all worlds. So if you're below 50, it simply buffs you up to that. It's not if you add adaptive, that then goes to 60. That's not quite how it works because that's how I originally thought it worked. So instead, we're all about making these worlds into Gaia worlds. So even our lovely blobby selves will be able to once again walk on the surface of these planets. The end goal of this run is to have every single world absolutely perfected. So Gaia world, a ring around it, mastery of nature for more districts, everything we can do to make our worlds better. Perhaps teachers of the shroud, anything we can do to improve the worlds, I will definitely go down the route of. I will be going with pleasure seekers eventually for our civics, which is a civic I'm not a big fan of, but I think it fits. Finally giving our population a better quality of life, and in terms of gameplay, it's going to be pretty simple, I imagine. Now, firstly, I'm not going to go down the route of any of the major ascension paths, because I've done it so many times, so we're not becoming synths, psychics, or genetic masters. We're going down the route of ascension paths I don't normally pick, which is going to be weak, honestly, especially with us not choosing inwards perfection and a few of our other ethics and civics choices. I don't think this will be a strong empire, but I think it'll be a very relaxing one, and I think the economy will be very good and very easy to manage. I think. With mining guilds giving us more minerals and masterful crafters giving us more consumer goods, we mine things and we make things out of what we mine. It's the one thing the blobs can do well. In terms of traits, again, all of our minerals just being added up and up again. And that's pretty much it. Our poor blobby species is entering the galaxy. We'll be ignoring most things. Uh, we will be joining the galactic community, but we will get a minus 50% modifier because I will be going with the isolationist policy type. So that kind of... I imagine all the other empires trying to get us to participate and we're not really able to, so the minus 50% there. But we can't have a proper pact because that requires too much mutual negotiation. And that is pretty much it. The happy fellas, led by Bob the Blob of Blorgington, take to the stars after a millennia underground. And of course, the other end goal is to ignore the endgame crisis, let it devour the entire galaxy because we don't really know about them and don't particularly care, and just have a lump of space, which is all we want and all we need, forever happy. We are fanatic pacifists, and we are xenophobic. Now, Fanatic Pacifist will actually help a lot as well because of the minus empire size and populations. The origin actually increases that by 10%, so that's nice to see. Where is it? There it is. Yep, Cave Dweller plus 10% size and populations. That negates that, which is very, very helpful. So, the Bliss Administration begins. Going with all the usual stats here. And you know what? We're not even going to go with scaling difficulty, which is going to make it a lot harder for us. But let's see if we can survive in a more difficult galaxy. And I'm also going to increase the empires by two. So it's going to be a busy, busy galaxy with higher than usual difficulty. Max difficulty crisis strength, everything else, all nice and early. 
Will the Blob Survive? Hey everyone, as is tradition in these four playthroughs, it is I, Future Lathrix, here to say that this video was an absolute joy to record. This is the type of empire which is perfect to play when you've had a bad day, or in my case a bad few weeks with some ups and downs there, and it was just really, really fun to record. It was definitely up there in my top empires for just relaxing. Hopefully the video itself is also entertaining, and definitely stick around until the end. There is some twists in the mid game, and a big twist in the end game, which I did not see coming, and that includes a time lapse in the video, so definitely worth sticking around. Now I do have to shill for the video, as you can probably tell by the upload uh, rate on this channel, these videos do take a lot of time to put together and a lot of time to edit, with this one taking a full day just to edit down, just the whole day spent looking over my own voice. So just for that, likes and comments would help out a lot. They are algorithm poison if they don't get interaction, and your likes and comments really help me to just do these videos which I absolutely love creating. It's why I like being a YouTuber, and thank you so much for all the support so far. And now, into the video, and into the glorious reign of Bob the Blob Blorgington, the first. And so we begin... Near the core of the galaxy. While other beings on the happy desert would spend their nights out in the wilds, our ancestors soon learned the wisdom of underground dwellings, sheltered from harsh light and climates. Easy access to minerals below ground allowed our happy felon predecessors to industrialize, unifying our species and furthering our cavernous civilization. There were numerous attempts to return to the surface, but each time it proved brutal and unforgiving. So we remain below, establishing our dominance from within our planet's very foundations. Now, with the discovery of the hyperdrive, we make our boldest attempt yet to reach out to the stars, and like our ancestors before us, we shall carve out homes from this darkness. So we begin straight next to two worlds, a desert and a tomb world, which will just be the 50% habitability, and we begin. So a pretty standard start, really. I should get some scouts, because we're going to need some choke points, but I'm generally pretty bad at that, but I'll try my best this time to actually scout ahead, rather than just surveying everything nearby. And hopefully, we'll have some space before we meet our very first neighbours. Starting off with these two worlds is great. Any extra worlds is going to be so important. But I really do think we'll probably end up building a lot of um, habitats, a lot of ring worlds, stuff like that. Because we are going to be very limited for space. And once we first build our bastions and our choke points, we're not moving again. That's our empire for the rest of the game, even once the crisis arrives. Hopefully we get a good precursor as well. Getting the psychic one or the hive mind one would be glorious. Honestly, it looks like there's a lot of quite easy choke points in every direction, so I am going to stop scouting already. But that was the fastest I've ever actually bothered to scout and fastest I've ever gave up scouting. Making some colony ships already. Our starting economy is really decent, which isn't really a surprise, honestly. We're making loads of extra consumer goods. We're getting lots of trade value and stuff from those consumer goods. And I'm going down the route of domination first, because this will give us some more worker output, while also giving us more influence. It's just a really nice one to start off with, and it will still be decent in the late game. I've started liking expansion less and less. Expansion is still good, obviously. Fantastic tradition tree. But I've started moving to others to begin with these days. I'm boring myself with that conversation. And yet I'm still finding it interesting. How am I already tired? I've only just started recording. We found the nuke, we disabled the nuke. More tech is always good. And I've finished off domination and I've grabbed Imperial Prerogative. Once again, I'm going for things I don't normally choose. So I might end up with Grasp of the Void, for instance, which I don't think is a particularly good uh, Ascension perk, but it has its uses, just a bit more niche. Probably going with that. We might go with Lord of War. I know it doesn't really fit our empire, but it kind of does in a way that our military is being... Um, Basically being paid for by an outside force here, rather than us having our own standing military. What else are we going with? Definitely going with, with Mastery of Nature later. That, that allows us to use influence to increase how many districts we have on our planets. Executive Vigor, maybe. It's not particularly good though, I really don't like that one either. Just because it doesn't scale well in late game when you've got a larger empire. Definitely going to go with Galactic Wonders since I want Ring Worlds. Definitely want Voidborn. Definitely having Eternal Vigilance. Probably going to have Defender of the Galaxy. Just trying to think, what what will stack up defences in, in my territory the best? And I think all of those probably work out. I'm also going to choose the Defensive Tradition Tree, probably third. Going with Prosperity next. Constru 
It's a difficult job, but we have managed to find even more ore, and now it offers us extra minerals. Four. We could continue. I'm probably just going to continue until something bad happens. No matter how deep the minerals in the planet are hidden, we will find and extract them. It is what we do. Others might give up when confronted with unstable ground, unfathomable depth, or the logistics of maintaining transport tunnels, but we do not. The underground is our home. Oh, so maybe this is for our origin then. And if we know where to look, it will provide. The lower we go, the higher quality and quantity of the ore. Let's get ourselves some crystals. Or death. I don't know. One or two. That was insanely early. Oh, wow. That's actually broke our um, choke points. But there we go. We have found the Cybrex. Fiery crystals. A new depth has been reached by our surveying expeditions on the planet. As predicted, we are encountering clusters of crystals that shine in vivid hues of oranges, yellows, and reds while light passes through them. At times, it looks as if a brazier is illuminating the caves where we find them, casting shifting shadows on the walls. We also have made a puzzling observation. It looks as if over the millennia, these crystals are slowly migrating towards the center of the planet. We are confident that there will be more to find if we only dig deeper towards the core. So clearly there's something scary at the core, eating the crystals, or... I don't know. I don't know how this game sometimes works. Maybe it's a black hole in there. It makes no sense in any way. But it could be a black hole, or a wormhole, or some kind of gateway. Loads make more sense than the first one. Anyway, obviously, we'll try our best. Uh-huh. The price of greed. As our surveyors delved ever deeper to find ore on the planet, more and more crystals littered their paths. Finally, they reached a gigantic cavern located close to the core of the planet, and we lost communications. The last things we know is that they were in the process of setting up lights, various sensors to study the cave, then screams, pain, death, destruction. The cause was soon revealed when other geological surveyors detected multiple echoes tunneling at tremendous speed towards our colonies. Not long after, amid quakes and tremors, we were attacked by a crystalline entity of tremendous proportions. It is not unlike the spaceborne crystals, but seems to be highly aggressive and capable of using reconstructive capabilities of its kind to reshape its body in an instant. It is one thing to face such an entity in space, where our ships can bring their speed and weapons to bear, but another entirely to fight them planetside. It spawned tentacle-like appendages that dug through the ground looking to attack us, or to absorb more crystals to grow. Projections are grim, and we might be looking at the end of our colony on the planet. Seriously? That bad? That's a 15k invade. We've lost a colony. Mm-hmm. Well, if we could ever destroy a 15k ground force, we might get the planet back. Well, I knew it was going to be bad. Didn't expect it to be that bad. Okay, so on this world, <laughs> one which is currently being attacked by the Crystalline Bane, I'm still able to make machines, though. But I can't resettle. Oh. And I don't get any resources from jobs. So no, please stop doing that because you're just going to increase my empire sprawl and I can't do anything about it. In fact, I might as well disable that as well then to get my energy back. Ooh. What have we got here then? A ruined orbital ring around a tomb. Well, that's cool. Then we have a good... The Gaia world. Okay, yeah, we do have a Gaia world over here. Ah, uh, the crystals were defending it, but I've pacified them, so that's good. They'll be our guardians. So, choke point, choke point. There's an alien empire here. This one's expanding like this. I think there's one over here. There's one here and one closer, but there's the border, as you can see. So, we're pretty much getting our final borders already. It's not big at all, but it's what we are. To our right, we have fanatic militarists. Now, thankfully, it's going to take a while before they get to our borders and really, really hate us. Though, oh, no, never mind. That is the same empire. Hmm. Maybe a bit faster than I expected. Now, thankfully, the normal pacifists don't really mind us too much. We returned their 
their wreckage, which gave us some influence, also made them happier. The Empire down here, I actually don't know what you are. Uh, not just as well, hmm. A little bit worried right now, but uh, yeah, this will be our Empire, this tiny little blob. Thankfully, we've got quite a few, in fact, loads of planets in our systems. And we'll build habitats as soon as we can. Imperial prerogative is actually going to be pretty good here. Cause since, since we're going to have lots of small colonies. Complete. Oh, good. What's I found? Devourers. Ooh, on the upside, they are bordering probably with the other empire over here. So they're probably going to be fighting out and not really caring about me for a while. Well, our tech is doing dreadfully. I had to divert everything to our economy. And the reason why our economy doesn't look as good as it should be right now is because most of the alloys, which is pretty much all I'm making right now, are going towards supporting our bastions. That's a lot of upkeep. But they are getting stronger, and I am moving further and further into unyielding, which is helping out a lot. Now, the reason why I need to do this is because this is the Devouring Swarm next to our border. So we have fanatic militarists and a swarm. Oh, and there's another swarm over here. We are in a really, really nasty galaxy. Militarists and devourers everywhere. And now a little safe blob over here. It is the 19th of November, 2252. And with a heavy heart, I must inform you all that Bob the Blob Blorgington has passed. However, we may rejoice that their replacement, Bob the Blob Blorgington II, has now taken the reins of the Empire. Long may they reign. We are now at war. They're trying to vassalize us, which honestly might not be the best, sorry, the worst idea. Um, we could try to become a specialist vassal. And that would make us protected. Wait. Legitimately, would being a vassal be better here? The Compact is likely currently one of the strongest empires in this galaxy. I could almost certainly hold off their advances here. Especially since I can stop upgrading the, sh the uh, stations over here. All resources go towards this. I honestly think being a vassal might be a better idea. Yes? You know, I do think becoming their vassal, and probably honestly at this point their protectorate, would be better. But I don't care. We don't understand them. We are the Bliss Administration. We do not understand anything above ourselves. And we will stand strong against any potential invaders. We don't even fully understand what's happening with this war right now. We do try to get involved because of our, our isolationist nature. We don't even really know what we're doing. And so we have low points here. If they win and vassalize us by force, then of course we will lose. But I'm not going to lose willingly. So let's see just how strong they are. Situation Break yourselves upon the Empire. Defend our spaceport. Spaceport lost. Spaceport lost. Spaceport lost. Spaceport lost. Is that a mercenary group? Wow, they've used the mercenary group to overwhelm us. I mean, it's pretty if nothing else. Well, that's it then, yeah, we're a vassal. Wow. Yeah, the, um, the compact over here was one of the advanced starts. They're actually a lot stronger than the Devourers. I've seen the Devourers' fleets as, as they've been attacking, and they gain a bit versus the Empire, then they lose a bit. It's... Yeah, these are definitely weaker. Yeesh. So we can't make any deals just yet, and we are a protectorate. We can't upgrade until we've got more tech, 
or just more anything else, because we are just so much weaker than the advanced start max difficulty empire next to us. Don't know what I'll ask for. I mean, I'll probably ask for research. Yeah, that's all I can really do. I mean, ask for some stuff, in return I'll let them have holdings or something. It's going to be a while before I can negotiate anyway. And honestly, it's very best for us to be a vassal anyway, because we are now under the protection of the compact. The main upside to becoming a vassal right now is that I can focus on science finally, so loads of research labs going down on our main world, which is good, because we are massively behind. I don't know how I played this so badly, I just feel like I'm a lot weaker than usual, but I think it could have just been just the fact that I'm used to scaling difficulty again. If scaling difficulty was on, I think I would have been able to survive that, but without scaling difficulty and max difficulty currently on, the empires are very, very strong. So, I really love the concept of this DLC. I love what they're doing with vassals and everything, but I think the balance is really off sometimes, to be completely transparent. Now, again, limited experience with this patch, with the DLC. I am very open to the fact I might be wrong. But right now, this deal will go through. Our overlord is going to give us 75% of my research production, 75% of my basic income, 75% of my advanced income, and 75% of my strategic resource. They're paying me that. Almost doubling all of these. In return, they get four holdings, our loyalty increases drastically, and with the holdings they're going to be better at keeping us under their control. And of course, this will only last while I'm a, I'm a protectorate. When I'm too strong, this will break, and I'll have to renegotiate, I believe. I almost don't want to accept this, because how strong it is, but I've got to, because I've never seen it look that silly before. Technology researched. So there we go. If we look at our economy now, it is ridiculous. And I'm going to push as much tech as possible, whilst I'm getting a 75% increase in it. Do you really find these things acceptable? I mean, you are ridiculously strong. Who, yeah, I mean, you are the strongest empire in the galactic community by a mile. Sure. This is how it is now. Okay, so almost instantly, I became a vassal. So, it's not quite as powerful as I thought, because once a vassal, I can't take as much as when you're a protectorate. That makes a lot more sense, because you're a protectorate, they can try and uplift you and get you to where you need to be. It's still on minus 45% though, and they clearly don't want this, but too bad. For a very long time, they're still paying me almost 50% of everything. So all of those alloys are going towards habitats. I've been stockpiling influence for ages, so all the influence has now just been jumped straight into as many habitats as possible. All of these worlds are going to help us out majorly in the long run. And again, we're still getting loads of extra tech, which is good because we're really behind. Kind of jump-starting now by being a vassal. Alas, with everything going on, the stress simply was too much for Bob the Blob Lorgenton II. They reigned honourably. And we shall miss them always. But now, thankfully, we have found Bob the Blob Lorgenton III, who will continue the legacy of our glorious leaders. Even though now, we are a vassal, and I don't know how my empire would really react to that. So far, the actual diplomacy has been pretty simple. We've said, give us stuff. And they've said, okay. Well, actually, we didn't say anything, for we cannot speak. We motioned to the shiny things, which we wanted, which we couldn't see. We motioned to the things which felt shiny. <laughs> and they gave it to us. That's it. Now, they really don't like this, so they're probably going to try and break all this soon, but... Yeah, when that happens, I'm going to move over to being something like... I don't know. Tech? Bulwark? Bulwark would be interesting, because that's all about defense. Our stations are being improved. 
Okay, the ravenous swarm and the devourers are getting really close to each other. They'll probably end up going to war with each other soon. Technology researched. I'm such a parasite. Technology researched. I'm not even helping out my overlord in terms of this. I didn't realize, but if you're a subject and an isolationist, <laughs> you have zero diplomatic light. So I'm putting no white towards the things I'm being forced to vote for. I am completely worthless as a vassal. I can only assume that how this has all worked out is that the advanced empire has gave us the technology to overcome the shortcomings of our species. And because of this, at least within ourselves and in our inner circles, scientific progress has exploded to a level which the compact just simply didn't expect. Because all of the power of our empire, all the power of our species, was being held back by these limitations. And somehow we'd still managed to make it to space. We are a hardy, determined species which just wants to be left alone. Then we were given all this tech, and we are exploding because of it. In fact, we've already become comparable with our host. I mean, our overlord. <laughs> and because of that, we are now converting our worlds into Gaia worlds. We now have World Shaper since I had the tech for it already. I mean, it's not that early, but for this empire, I think it is. So as I get the energy now... All of our worlds will be converted into beautiful Gaia worlds, so perfect that even our species with their limitations can once again walk on the surface of them. We are currently in a golden age, thanks to the benevolence of another, who we still don't really care about. We'll cast them aside as soon as we can. In the meantime though, I am now building a hyper relays, so we are building a road system as well around our empire. I also have lots and lots of habitats, which is awesome. Which is awesome. I talk for a living. Using various technological upgrades, perhaps now our species, which used electronic pulses to figure out where they were within the cave, can now use the same pulses to actually see in a more traditional sense of the worlds they live in. Or perhaps they have now got a sense of smell or... Vague sense of hearing, upgrading the sensitivity of their flesh in order to see what's around them, or hear what's around them. And as a result, even these little tastes has gave rise to the Pleasure Seekers Civic. They are now a decadent species, and will be getting servants from the galactic market in order to increase amenities on their worlds. There we go. So all species which can be, ah, I can't do it right now, but eventually I will be swapping them all to domestic servitude. Oh, I can, excellent. So if they don't have a job, they, they just become a servant, which increases amenities drastically. I've also now made it so our main species is under the decadent, life, yeah, the decadent lifestyle living standard, which is plus 20% happiness as long as we have consumer goods. Our people are incredibly happy now. I've cancelled the Hyper Relays, since now we can build orbital rings, but sadly, one of my goals is not going to be semi-impossible now. It turns out you can't have an orbital ring and a habitat above a world. And I've already got a habitat above our home world of Happy Desert. So, I, so one of our worlds won't have a ring, but it's okay. They'll still have 100% happiness. They'll still be Gaia and everything else. It's not really a big deal, and maybe I'll even move our capital later on. Because rings are very, very good. And not having that around the capital really sucks. But, you know, it's fine. We're still an absolute powerhouse right now since we are stealing tech and resources from our host. The ring worlds are now being repaired. With the limited upgrades to ourselves, we have now became intelligence on top of everything else, increasing our research. We are still non-adaptive and still completely alien to the other species, being that we still do not communicate in any traditional sense. Through pheromones and electrical signals, we can communicate with each other with increasing ease. But we are continuing to become more and more alien. Perhaps purposefully. Well, uh, I didn't know this one was an option. Paradise made. So this terraformed world 
is perfect. This moon was terraformed to look like the creator's promised land. I've never seen this one happen from terraforming. It must be just the best one possible. So, yeah. Plus 25% to unity. I'm going to build a ring around this right now. And I'm going to give it the extra unity um, district. So, lots of unity from this world. Hello, Shroud Walkers. Are we in a federation? <laughs> okay. My brain just ping-ponged all over the place then. One second. Shroud Walkers, I love you. Don't care right now. Well. I have never seen... An AI empire be so efficient at galactic domination before. So we are in a hegemon... Uh, I can never say this correctly. We are in the Angry Federation. Hegemony? Whatever. Either way. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing here. Says the Bliss Administration crying. How diplomatic weight is obviously so low because... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm above zero. How am I above zero? Xeno diplomacy. <laughs> yeah, so I'm never going to be strong enough to take control of this then. <laughs> um, so when I eventually have an uprising, I'll have to leave via destroying everyone, which is going to be so... D oh my god, you're so strong! Jeez, AI, you're mental. Well, I'll wait until the uh, crisis cleans the galaxy. Again, I don't really care. I'm, I'm just sitting here not understanding what's going on. Occasionally nodding. Making weird blob noises. It's at this moment I realise I'm just an NPC. I'm just here. You know, occasionally they talk to me. Things happen around me. I'm just here. Ships upgraded. I'm never going to kill a Leviathan. I'm never going to be able to kill a uh, Awakened Empire. I didn't even realise we were at war. When did that happen? <laughs> when did that even happen? <laughs> oh, I, I love this playthrough. It's so stupid so far. Upgraded. The fleets beckon. The stations are armed. Even our rings are ready. We may have been fell before. But next time we will endure as our ancestors always have. I'm going to have to fight all of these at the same time. It's going to be an absolute nightmare, but it's going to be glorious. Just need to make sure the fleets are all operational. I'm still building a lot of stuff right now. Uh, the defense grid, for instance, has only just came online as, in terms of getting the tech, and I need them to be fully operational. It's going to be at least another maybe 10, 20 years before we declare war for our freedom. And until then, we'll continue to drain the host before we leave it. We may even get the Colossus Project done. Oh, that would be good. Get the bubble. Go to war. They have opened our eyes. It's only right that we bubble their worlds and close theirs. I am a disease. It is with a heavy heart. In this, the year 2309. But sadly, Bob the Blob Blorgington, the third, passed away. Though thankfully, and incorrectly in their name, Bob the Blob Blorgington, the fourth, was found, and has taken charge of our glorious empire once again. Long may they reign, and may they grant us freedom from our oppressors, who we are parasitically devouring, because right now, we are producing more tech than they are, and they are still feeding us. <laughs> I don't even know how that works out. Yeah. That's unfortunate for you. Their <laughs> tech growth must be tiny. They agreed to a bad deal, thinking we wouldn't take to space. Thinking we wouldn't grow as a species. They were so very wrong. Also, yeah, I've been spamming um, reverse engineering arcane technology every single time I could. Last time was physics research, which was really helpful because I'm going for energy weapon damage. I'm basically going for the anti-scourge build, because I also find it the easiest to build up our defense platforms. Since our engineering can go for defense platform hull and damage, and then our physics can go for energy weapons. That's kind of what we're going with. And right now we have also mixed in some strike craft because they're nice and strong early on. So we have battleships, we're upgrading them, 
Our borders are becoming more and more terrifyingly secure. And soon, we'll have Colossus. I never even thought to bombard this world. Ah. <laughs> well, okay, so it seems like there's some resilience to it and with that much health. Yeah, that's not gonna work. I am building some clones, but that's the best soldiers we have. So, still not the best. Look at our beautiful, perfect worlds. I am so curious how much we're hurting our uh, host by how much we're draining from them. It's hard to tell. Yeah, they haven't got fully upgraded stuff yet. Lovely. Obviously, the main megastructure we're building is the coordination center because this increases how many defense platforms we can have, which is really useful for this type of empire which doesn't want to move. And this will definitely get us to 100k per citadel. And with systems with a ring in it as well, it's even stronger. So that's pretty fantastic. I think I'm now strong enough to deal with the main force. The problem is, of course, if I go to war to, to free myself, I will be fighting all of the vassals at once. But I do have two almost 60k fleets, and they're going to just sit there as well. I'm hoping we can win by just sitting there going, now what? Uh, well, it's going to happen likely as soon as this war's over, which... When did we get another member of this federation? Who did Who joined? We have five Federation members? Since when? I am slightly confused. Oh well, the important thing is, we'll be free soon. Also, since I don't know if I actually spoke out loud about this, I have now got Mastery of Nature, and it is, in my opinion, one of the worst Ascension perks. It's fun, but it's too overpriced what it does. So, for two extra districts on a planet, it costs 2,000 energy and 100 influence. And all I can think of every time I'm spending that, and I am spending it quite a bit every time I get to 100, one of the worlds is being approved. Why am I not just making a habitat? Am I wrong here? Am I wrong in thinking that this is just worse? Now, before I say anything else, I don't mind some picks being worse than others. In fact, I like that. Not everything should be balanced in a big game like this, completely with each other, because there are definitely some essential perks much better than others. But this one always, I don't know, I, th I feel like there should be something else to this. Maybe a chance of when you complete it, it adds an extra benefit to the world, like the rich mineral seams or something. I don't know. That's just my £5.50. Okay, two cents. Yeah, take that. 0.02% damage to Devastation. So we landed 10k army power here, and it looks like I might actually win. It was whittled down to 13k army strength. I guess since it is only one, although it is almost, well, it's like three shotting them, it can't do it fast enough. We have all clones, and then we also have a single Cybrex war form, which isn't actually in the fight right now. Hey, beautiful. Oh, nice, a big chunk of unity. Very nice. 99,000 unity? Well, that's cool. After a grueling campaign, the crystalline entity dwelling at the heart of the planet was finally defeated. The final battle took place deep underground, in the cave housing the core of the crystal behemoth. And only after we managed to shatter it did the beast stop fighting. Its various appendages disintegrated, losing cohesion at a molecular level and sprinkling crystal dust across the planet. The innumerable tunnels left in the wake of the crystal tentacles are going to help us a lot in our efforts to mine the exceptionally rich minerals composing this world. As for the origin of the entity itself, we are left with many questions. But we might just have gained some insight on the way that spacefaring crystalline entities are created. I mean, that's awesome. So there we are. Exceptional quality minerals. The world may now grow once again. 
yes, you do not need anywhere near as much ground force as I expected, just for a reference there. So, hopefully that helps out someone, because we could have took that back a long time ago based on that. All fleets moving to our borders. It is time to assert our freedom. Though this will ruin our economy, though this will ruin our tech, though this is a stupid thing to do, we simply wish to be left alone. They forced us into the light, and now we're going to force them into the dark. As soon as the Colossus reaches the borders, war will begin. Unfortunately, war is our only option. War is our only option. Also, now realise we really went to the wrong border here, but that's fine. Make your way into their territory. Our bastion will hold the line. I'm just waiting to see how bad the economy is going to be right now. Yep, that's kind of what I expected. Okay. Yeah, that's actually worse than I thought. We, we we may go bankrupt over this. Just putting out there. We may go bankrupt, but I'll try my best to fix it as we go. You can hardly see the Colossus with this backdrop, but it makes it all the more terrifying. Come on. There we go. Either they will actually accept our surrender, sorry, they'll actually accept our victory, or we are going to turn every single one of their worlds into a peaceful haven of darkness for all eternity. It's really up to them. I don't need my ground forces on a side note. I don't know why I'm bringing them with me. I did conquer the world before I then bubbled it, which is a bit silly. Yeah, I didn't see that fleet. 152,000 Federation fleet versus our Citadel. I'm hoping because we have all the advantages of being in our own system, despite the fact we have less fleet power, we might win this. Spaceport lost. Losing defense structure straight away. Though... <laughs> they just got mowed down! Oh, the range of these shots! That's why, look at that, we're hitting them the second they enter the system. Did you really try to encroach on our territory again? Oh. Some normal battles over here. This will be some of the other empires, I imagine, yeah, trying to um, come to the aid of their overlord. Petty minions. Well, moving our fleets back, onwards to the next worlds. Just going to jump the Colossus because it's going to be too vulnerable. I could destroy these, but I'm just going to go after the worlds. That's some nasty fleet power. I, I love the fact that strike craft now go above the battle. Jeez. Yeah, I'm on a hundred percent now. Oh dear. Uh, let's get you back there, please. I don't want my own Colossus to be destroyed. That would be very beneficial. That is actually shielded, apparently. No actual visuals there, but still. Construction complete.
I kind of forgot to send in my juggernaut this entire time. Look, we're not a warmongering people. We don't quite get how this works. I am building up more fleets, though. Thankfully, alloys have been ridiculously cheap, so just spamming some extra battleships. They'll be joining soon. I am going to try and take their capital. They do have enough fleet power to kill me, yet they keep on not attacking me. They're, like, just hiding out in the systems next to me at all times. I'm basically accepting it that if they do take out my fleet, I'm done, so the war's over. So I'm perfectly fine with them actually doing that, as sad as it is. But at this rate, I am going to make it. Sure. Your governors are normally pretty good, I think. Oh yeah, the psychic ones of extra stability. Okay, you're replacing you. And then you are going to be replaced with that one. The two special governors. These stations aren't particularly strong. We enter the system, we obliterate them. One system off the home world. Oh, they're waiting for reinforcements for their Federation fleet. That's what they're doing. I just saw all the Federation fleets moving around. That's what's going on. Well, that's too slow, though. But yet, they should have just threw themselves at me. Perhaps it's one of those times where it looks like they would win, but actually, because of the composition, we would win, and the AI knows that. I mean, especially with the Juggernaut there. The Juggernaut is bringing a lot of extra damage for the Strikecraft. I think we need to watch this in its entirety. Don't worry, I'll get to the research in a second. Oh, I forgot about the Great Khan. How did the Great Khan do? Oh. Well, they died, but well done taking over all that territory. I was going to say with the tech, if you don't instantly get to the tech, because I know some people stress out when I just leave it like this, you get stored research. So you do end up getting it back. And... Done. The home world has been destroyed. They will forever be in ignorance of the galaxy. After all, ignorance is bliss. With the home world bubbled, status quo has been reached. And although I could have completely destroyed this empire, I've decided instead that we've certainly taught them a lesson. Now, here's the problem. They're going to hate us, and because of that, what we're going to need to do, if we want to stay in the Federation for all the bonuses, we need to gain control of it. So Diplomatic White won't do it. We need to swap for something else. Uh, now, would I be able to do this if I was Inwards Perfection? Yes, I actually would. And I know my empire has changed a bit now. So we could either leave the Federation, probably be kicked soon, or we could gain control of it. And use them as our guardians. I mean, after all, we have proven to be parasitic. So if I go with technology, I think I'll become the strongest then. And for some reason, they all accept this. I don't really know why. Come on, don't kick me, don't kick me, don't kick me. Okay. And now I'm in charge. There we go. We have the most shiny, listen to us, and then we just sit here doing nothing else. We're not going to help them or anything else. We are now going to be left alone eternally because we have a, a guard dog to the southwest. And we're just going to sit here from now on. So there we are. We now have the Federation fleet somewhere. Oh, there it is. Hey, Federation fleet. And now we can get back to just being on our own. We're not going to run anything. We're just going to sit here because now everyone's terrified of us. So I've double-checked just to make sure we are playing by the rules. Yes, an Inwards Perfection Empire cannot join the Federation. However, if they're forced into Federation, they can act as a normal Federation member. And yes, that means they can gain control of the Federation. So we are still playing by the rules as if we are um, Inwards Perfection. I still haven't got any agreements with any other Empire, including the Empires within my Federation. Though I could do that, I think, maybe, with the free ones forced upon you. So, this all makes sense. Bob is just going to sit there smiling to himself. Everyone's going to ask him, 
Sir, what do we do about this problem? And he's going to look at them, smile, and then play his Game Boy. Oh, uh, I just feel too cheesy. You know, we're leaving. It sucks, because you're very powerful. We can even change it to something else by bribing them. Like a trade league. Oh, a trade league would be glorious, but no. We're leaving it for two reasons. First of all, yeah, it doesn't feel like it's the theme of this run. Secondly, my main goal was to get 100% happiness to all of my people. That was impossible whilst I was in a federation. This one here, the xenophobe group, was incredibly upset by being in a federation. Now, sadly, we do have xenophiles at the moment. Why? Okay, but the Empire has an active non-governing faction. That will pass in time. So that's going to go away. But most of them... Yeah, we have more isolationists. We needed to do that. Why do you have so many materialists? Is it just because we have synths? Robotic pups, full rights for AI. Yeah. It's going to be difficult to get 100%. Now, we're close anyway. Even when they're upset because of all the bonuses we've got, they're still pretty close to 100%. So, we just need less of them to be xenophiles. I could suppress it. Doesn't make them less happy, though, right? Just less faction approval, which is already really close to zero, so sure. Can I suppress multiple? Okay, so we're suppressing the militarists and we're suppressing the xenophiles. We are actively promoting the pacifists. Can I promote several of them? Because that would be good. There we are. So we're promoting pacifist, xenophobe, and materialist. We are actively suppressing xenophile and militarist ideals. Well, that's a waste. Um, so, with the Shroud Walkers, if you're isolationist, you don't get the event really working if you do the um, tell us your faith thing. We defy the Shroud's will by remaining still and guarding our territory. The, prog the progress of the situation will depend largely on our relations with other empires, for instance. Setting our diplomatic stance to cooperative will make it progress faster. So, being isolationist and having closed borders of everyone has just nullified the entire thing. Also, I managed to run out of gas, which is very annoying. I'm now remedying it. So, uh, yeah, I'm really not sure how much footage is going to be in this video. I mean, I've been, I've been playing for days now at this point, but I'm just uh, looking at the footage and just the amount of time I'm silent just managing things because there's very little to do with this type of empire. <laughs> Insanely fun. I love this kind of thing. Just tweaking things here and there. See, it's fun for me, because I'm apparently a very boring person, but I love this kind of stuff. So just making sure our worlds are all good, upgrading them when I need to. This one isn't quite finished yet, so I'll, in fact, no, I'll just go ahead with this one. I've put down the last of the hyperlines for this section, then I'll do this section over here, scratching the itch of building roads. Yeah, just making sure that our worlds are doing what they should be doing, really. More so than anything else. Not much else to say. Believe it or not, this is a tech world. Yeah, uh, yeah. I just swapped it to tech world. It was a mining world, obviously, but I've swapped it over to tech because minerals aren't really going to be a problem anymore. But consumer goods might be. It's really not too important. Though if I've done it correctly, yeah, we still have the low gravity mega refiners here, increasing our minerals from jobs, and then we have the giga mall increasing our trade value because we still get loads of trade value just passively, or at least a good chunk. Sadly, there is no tech. Um, option, which is a bit of a shame. I'd love if there was a tech one. Unless I'm missing it. No, it's unity, food, energy. Consumer goods, alloys. That's it. So, nope. Sadly, no tech. A really silly thing I've just noticed. The federation I was a member of, then briefly took control of. I have apparently forgot the name of it. Unknown federation. I'm fairly certain I would know what the Federation is. Also, they're still stronger than me. Yeesh. Okay. 
I mean, I'm not that strong, to be Check fair. I'm really banking on the endgame crisis being locked another 10 years or so. I mean, in all likelihood, I, in my experience, I have no real numbers to back this up, the endgame crisis seems to average about 15 years after they can spawn, about there. So if that happens this time, I'm not confident we'll be okay. But if we can get them to a single choke point and keep fighting them with the Citadel and all the bonuses it gives and make sure our Juggernaut's there, I think we'll be able to survive at that point. Hopefully. No! Corona has died! Can we not name our scientist that? No reason. Well then. A world was apparently just purged. It was purged of all higher life forms by a neutron sweep by the Spyrian Colossus. Wait, is that in their own territory? That's you. You're the Spyria. I have no- you're currently at war? Oh, they must have had- um, the Alliance here must have had some territory here. Huh. Okay then. Back to not caring. Technology Isolation. Research. Now, it's been like this for a while, but I just forgot to mention it. Um, our machines are about 50% happiness. Some of them are a little bit happier because, well, it depends on which faction they're with. But the important part is, all of the happy fellas are at 100%. I haven't found a single one which hasn't been at 100 at the moment. I've been checking all the different worlds, so it seems like... I think you might be the last person in this faction. Why must you contradict me the second... You don't exist. So like 99% of our population is currently 100% happiness. I even have hearts and minds currently active. I am really pushing for those factions to be dissolved. I need to remember, I can just keep on swapping between them like this. I didn't realize there isn't one for um, refineries either. Uh, I guess energy is kind of what we're going with here. It's anything really top great. I mean, we do need food quite desperately, so maybe I'll turn this one more food-like. Swap the generators for agriculture. Oh. Well, I still need more food anyway. Look, you've been apparently preparing to be at war with me now for years. Are you actually going to attack me, or is this all just an elaborate hoax? You're just... angrily sitting there. I don't know what you're so angry for. Look how happy your people are, all being all chill and shiny. Uh. Don't mess with the isolationists. Just let them stay there, you know? Well, this is a new one. Lobbyists. Oh, this is going to be lovely. Vo many voices may be heard at the galactic community, not all of them friendly, and certainly not all of them aligning with Bliss administration interests. Unfortunately, it seems that the ambassador has been listening to the wrong voices. Eyebrows were raised when she attended several conferences hosted by the Galactic Mass Driver Association. Oh dear. Uh, now it has emerged that large sum of credits traceable to that organization were transferred to her. The colleagues demand that she be recalled, citing trust issues. However, some of our more devious advisors suggest we could strike a deal to keep her in place in return for a share of the pot. Minus 15% diplomatic weight for 56k energy. That's a lot. It would allow me to start building up some more fleets very soon, which is kind of what we'd need at the moment, since alloys are quite cheap. Um, could buy quite a few. How long until the next election? A good while. Ah, and I... Yeah. What's the harm in it? I'm sure nothing bad can possibly happen. Just building a few fortress habitats now. These are just going to have loads of strongholds on, which will generate loads of defensive armies, and it'll just be nice and difficult to destroy them. However, now I'm thinking of it, it should also have one planetary shield generator. This will also produce a lot of unity, and because we went down the route of unyielding, defense armies now also produce 0 0.5 unity, so that's good, because currently I can't have every single edict on at the same time, which is kind of upsetting. Once I have all of these, I will be able to, and that is all good, and then I can fully upgrade our worlds as well, with the ascension stuff, all is lovely. We are so small. The sleepers awake. The fools.
The Adix Restorers. We do not care. For we are Blob. Led by Blob. Blob. I'm really hoping that this empire becomes really hyper-aggressive. I'm fairly certain I have a wormhole here. Yeah, so do need to be a little bit worried. Did I build... Uh, yeah, okay, so I have built up a fortress here as well, which I'm going to build up more. You're already fully... Nope. Now you're fully stocked. As one of our governors sadly passes away. Uh, can we please get a decent one? This is going to be a lot of my unity, isn't it? I mean, I know this has been one of the weaker empires I've played for a while for numerous reasons. But our neighbour, who is um, the pacifist, is keeping up with us in tech and economy. Now, they're huge, admittedly, but still. That's probably some of the best I've seen from a, from a, just a regular empire in a while. Do I trust them to defend the galaxy versus the endgame crisis? No, but at least they're going to have some resistance. Really not much to say over the last few years, just building more habitats, I'm building a ring world which is taking forever, it's in its second stage now, so I'm going to be able to get some proper habitation there. And I am building a... where are you? The, the mega shipyard's almost finished, and I am building our sentry array, so we'll be able to see the entire galaxy. Not that we really want to, but we can, in case anyone dare threaten us. And that's it, just waiting for a little bit more unity so I can activate the Grand Fleet. Uh, we'll be getting loads more unity soon from our Fortress Worlds, once they get some more people in, since they are slowly siphoning them from the worlds which have unemployment. Very relaxed. Not much to say. I'm hoping that the Awakened Empire becomes more aggressive soon. Just kind of sitting there, bordering everyone. Planet. Okay, that is literally the worst one we could have got. Um, this is the Unbidden. Why is it the worst? Because I have got no repeatables really done in the stuff I need now. Because they counter armor, and they counter energy weapons, except for the ones that go through their shields. The problem is, of course, I don't have any of those for just large weapons, which are the defense structures. So we're going to have to move over to Kinetic. So, two things. First of all, the Unbidden have spawned actually in a pretty good place, I think. I don't know about other wormholes around the galaxy, but I know there's no wormholes directly to my territory here, and they'll have to do this down here, round here, and then all the way around, and then that's the first one. It's not the best position, which would have been literally this chunk here, but it's like the second best, there and there. Well, actually, just there, because over here goes to another wormhole. Anyway, upon seeing that, sadly, Joybringer Bob the Blob Bloggington, the fourth, who oversaw our freedom from our overlords, who's oversaw this era of prosperity, had a heart attack. And has passed away. Like, literally the next day. But wouldn't you know it, Joybringer Bob the Blob Blorkington V has taken the reins of our empire. Long may they prosper, and may they defeat the unbidden threat. Yeesh. Yes, go that way. That way is much better for us. This way is good, I think. Where are the wormholes? See, the problem is, even if I did find a wormhole, I haven't explored any of them, so I don't know where they go. But yeah, this is better for us, right? Oh, actually, uh, if they go up and around here, they can still double back. Just give me five, ten years, please. Well, the Unbidden are absolutely rushing through the enemy. If they happen to just turn towards us, they are going to be here really early. Uh, most of my fleets are already upgraded. I am changing them a little bit right now, but they are all using the kinetic weapons and everything else. They look weaker than they are because currently there is the storm. Any system with the storm active uh, shields are being nullified. I am also creating titans. I don't normally use that many titans, honestly. But I want at least a few of them mixed in just to reduce the shields of the enemy. That's all. 20% less shields is a very big deal. When it comes to the unbidden. Okay, well I've activated the extra um, kinetic damage at least. Oh, we're taking losses this time. Oh, please no more. They're spreading in multiple directions. So they can't possibly be sending them all. I still don't know how they got there. It must have been the Shroud, right? 
I'm saying, I don't really know what's there. Maybe something I'm missing. I am building a uh, sentry thing, but it's not done yet. <laughs> you, you buggers. The Awakened Emperor is taking this opportunity to expand their space. Um, I've also just done something else I didn't think of before because I'm a dum-dum. I've swapped some of these over. I now have Fortress Proclamation on so I can upgrade the station once again as fast as I can. I also have Desperate Measures, Home, ter home Territory Fire Rate plus 40%. That's another reason why having these habitats are so important. So when the station goes down, the system doesn't automatically become an unbidden territory, which it will normally. For instance, yeah, because there's like worlds here, they didn't instantly become unbidden when they got around there. With the storm here, this is actually perfect. We'll get a few more kills, hopefully. Our communications jammer was almost ready in time to slow them down. Oh, we're going to lose some fleets here. They're about to start hitting us back. Yep, there we go. Just win. Okay, good, good. They don't have unlimited fleets. Their actual strength, by the way, is far higher than 1.6 mil. It's because we're instantly going through their shields. But just by doing that, how are they... I don't understand how they're getting where they're get. Is it the hyperlines? Is it the hyperlines? I, I don't understand how they're getting. If someone could tell me how they're getting where they're getting, I would love to know because I'm getting really worried. Because if they start hitting me at multiple locations, I am done for. Oh, I'm so glad I have the um, the mega shipyard, at least, so, so we are producing f ships as fast as our economy will let us. The Juggernaut's now in the system. And we have the Communication Jammer, which is minus 20% speed on them. We're about to also get the Uplink Computer, which increases our range as well. The Juggernaut's also increasing our range, so we're going to have a drastic range increase, along with a slowdown effect on the enemy. That should be good right and now we also have all the modifiers properly activated why didn't i have the juggernaut in the first place honestly completely forgot about it just was a little bit stressed stressed and i'll activate the shield boost once that's actually worth anything right now about the shields no real point is there Oh, it's just the star base weapons range increased with the um, uplink stuff. I mean, still worth it. As long as we're slowing them down and reducing their shields with the star bases being there, that's still good. After looking around, thankfully, it seems like... Are you about to? Well, a lot of the fleets are now in the position where they're just sitting bombarding worlds. They've expanded aggressively, they've found worlds which they're now attacking, and they're just kind of sitting there obliterating these planets. So you're probably going to go to the home world. There's at least one world here. Oh, multiple. Okay. Lots of ring worlds. You'll go there, obliterate that. And that's slowing them down significantly. We thankfully, and honestly, the storm helped out massively. Would I have, would I have survived without the storm? I honestly don't know. Probably not. But the storm allowed us to destroy every single fleet which was going in this direction. So now we have more time. And now we're stacking things up properly with the Juggernaut there increasing the range of our weapons by 40%. We have the Titans mixed in, which are all set to the same thing, which is reduce enemies' uh, maximum shields. They all have the same thing, so I want at least one of them to survive, and they normally get targeted first, so they're all there just with that. And all of our defense systems, even this one now being repaired, has the anti-shield and slowdown effects on the enemy. These are all such big deals. We then, of course, in the Edicts, have increased our ammunition, we'll increase our shields before the next fight, and we've also increased our damage while we're in our home territory. We might make it. And every year, they don't attack and they do something else. That's good for us. I completely forgot we were spending more Volatile Notes because of the whole Edict thing. Whoops-a-daisy. Hostile fleet. Well, here we go. No storm this time. We have everything we really can have. It's just hope for the best. Lots of shield reduction from our titans and from the station. We're already headbutting them. Oh god, we're going to lose so many ships. But a win? Okay. That's all I wanted to see. A win. That's it. Also, that enemy was like a 3 mil, by the way, before it jumped over. So clearly, our um, our shield weakening is drastic in these systems. 
How much is it total? So it's uh, 20% from that, and then the Titans are also giving... 20 as well, yeah, so it's 40% shield dampening. And as long as we're in our territory, plus 40% fire right from us. Yeah, I think we're going to be okay. Now that we're defending against their wives, even without that, as long as that huge super fleet stays away from us for a while, we'll be okay. I think we're going to be okay. I'm keen to see the rest of the galaxy burn. Technology researched. Ah, oh, once again, getting right in there. We're going to lose so many ships. Are we going to lose? Oh, Lord, how much did we just lose then? I didn't check the power of that fleet. I just saw there was a fleet, and... There goes my entire defense force. Please have no one nearby. Okay, that was the only one there. Uh, near this wormhole. Okay, you're going that way. I saw that earlier. Okay, I think I'm good for now. No, go the other way. Five jumps away. Our silly little weak empire is doing everything it can to prepare. The station is ready. Weak as it is. I could just stay here, let them fight that. Ugh, it's just two jumps. As soon as it's in our territory, we're done. Oh, thank you for turning. I was so certain they were heading towards us. They still might, though. We can react pretty quickly, though, so... Technology researched. Oh, I might need to move the fleets over there. No one here, though, right? No, anyone near this one? No. Okay, so we're definitely not going to be attacked over here. Most of them are over here and, like, stacked up. There's, like, several stacks of, like, two or three sh uh, fleets over there. Go the other way. Nope, that's still just as bad. So for once I have a monthly trade to buy as many alloys as I can per month. I've been using the Warforge every time I can. I was so sure that fleet was heading towards me. Okay, over here is still empty. No one near... No! Where are you all going? Okay, you're going away. You are heading towards the wormhole. You're going away. Uh, never mind. Fleets, return back to your original location. I think this is it. I can't see how we win this. Tank for the defense platforms for a little while, maybe? No. You're a bit like there, mate. You're leaving. Okay. Science ship under fire. This is why people don't recommend investing so heavily in um fashions. Our spaceport. Research station lost. Spaceport lost. Spaceport lost. So what are you gonna do then? Actually, begin bombardment on our fortress. Technology yep. researched. That is very little. Oh no, that's just for devastation. Yeah, it's probably going to destroy the pops fairly quickly. I'm not even sending in forces right now. They'd be obliterated instantly. Oh, 
are they not affected by the FTL inhibitors on the world? I could have sworn I have done this before with the Unbidden and they were... <laughs> oh my god! All of my plot I'm doomed! Oh, this is the end. But my only hope is just to stay back, build an overwhelming force that can destroy fleets without losing anything, and just hope the enemy don't go to my capital. The administration is shrinking. More and more. Where are you going? Are you just using my territory as like a stop to get elsewhere? Okay. So the portal's there. So at least they are going to fight the unbidden for a while. Go back, defend yourselves. And so the third of all of the unbidden forces are here now. <sighs> right next to my wormhole. Yep. Oh good, the 8 mil fleet is here to clean out the rest of my empire. I just wanted to have a fun build and rely on something silly. I wanted to just about defend myself, but <laughs> this is literally the worst enemy that could have spawned. Oh, that's what happens when you uh, build something. First of all, this is what happens. You don't play Metro at all. You don't play perfectly. You just have fun. But then you put all your resources towards one thing, which is fighting the Scourge, and then it isn't the Scourge who fight you. No chance. Utterly no chance. Oh, don't. Don't do the thing you're about to do. Okay, so all worlds nearby need to have a... Uh, where is it? They all need to have a shield generator, like right now. Because it does take them a long time to chew through a world. So if I can stall them even further, I might be able to just... Just hang in there a little bit longer. More likely than anything, I'm just going to be hurting myself and just making the pain last longer, but you know. We might win. <laughs> we might. Technology researched. Oh, <laughs> well, a valiant defense there, but this is our home world. And so this is the end. Our mega shipyard and regular shipyard have been destroyed. Well, not destroyed, but they're now in hostile territory, so if I try and spawn anything, it'll just die instantly. Our home world is being bombarded, as are multiple other worlds. The administration has met defeat. Construction ship lost. Into the void we go. And which colours are going to end up winning? Blue, green, or yellow? Orange? Yellow? The other. Oh, well, definitely not that one. <laughs> yeah, the yellow one's already been annihilated, pretty much. Just the green and blue left. At this point, the Empire was felled. And now the war is between the three factions of the Unbidden. And so the time lapse begins. 
Place your bets on which colour will win this war. Green, yellow or blue.
So after a hundred or so years, I am calling the time lapse here. The green has clearly won. The blue portal has been removed, as has the yellow portal. The forces of the green is just insanely high. If we take a look down here, for instance, we can see some of their forces attacking. They are just utterly everywhere, and it's causing the game to lag out something horrible. But also, they're just kind of moving back and forth. It's going to take a very long time. They are still bombarding worlds pretty much Oh, there's still a little bit of bliss over here as well. There's two systems which currently have bliss stuff, and it is just, just the fortresses. The fortresses are taking a long time to take down because all of the population move there, and they do have defenses on them. That one doesn't, but most of them do. So there's two systems, that one and this one over here, but they are very rapidly being removed, as is every other empire in the galaxy. So, well done, Greens. You win this day. I'll be back soon. And we're definitely fighting the Unbidden again, because I'm making sure they're the endgame crisis. We're going to get some revenge. Uh, by saying that, though, then I end up scaling towards the Unbidden. It makes it easier. The reason why they won this time is because I scaled versus the Scourge. We'll see how I feel next time. Tell me how you feel. Should I make sure the Unbidden spawn, or keep it random and just hope that our ancient enemy faces us again? The galaxy is being wiped clean, and I really do hope you've enjoyed this video. So until next time, a defeated Lathrix scurries away.